Hello, everybody. The eruption that began on February 8th in Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula is over, meaning it lasted for just 24 hours, making it one of, if not the shortest effusive eruption we have on record in Iceland. Despite looking promising in the beginning, this eruption turned into a nightmare quickly when one lava flow was directed in an unfortunate direction, which led it towards a hot water pipe that over 30,000 people depend on. This lava flow advanced at high speeds and it didn't take long to reach the pipe and destroy it, which means all these 30,000 people are now without hot water. Being without hot water is one thing, but being without hot water in temperatures below zero is another thing. Not only is it difficult for people that have to rely on electric radiators to heat their homes, but also for the whole hot water grid, as frost damage is a serious thing. If you want to hear more details regarding the situation, check out Just Icelandic's video, if you haven't already. I'll focus more on the geological side. We've now gotten enough GPS data points to see clearly that uplift continues, meaning there's still magma flowing into the chamber under Schwarzenegger. A really interesting study conducted by an international group of scientists, the University of Iceland, and respected Icelandic geologists, has been published, revealing some intriguing insights on the November 10th intrusion event and shows just how big that event truly was. More on that later. How does this eruption compare to the previous two? Does continued uplift mean another eruption will occur? Well, let's check out the details. Beginning with this eruption's stats. As mentioned in the beginning, the length of this eruption probably ranks as the shortest eruption in Iceland since measurements began. But, despite that, it managed to do damage and pump out some lava. The area covered is around 3.5 square kilometers, with the longest lava flow traveling an impressive 4 kilometers, stopping just after it had destroyed the hot water pipe like that was its mission. The lava fountain show was spectacular in the beginning, reaching heights of 50 to 80 meters in the initial stages. This shows that when the eruptions occur in this location, they have way more pressure left compared to the location of the January 14th eruption, which only had lava fountains reaching heights of 20 to 30 meters. This greater pressure also resulted in higher lava outputs with a peak likely being around 300 to 400 cubic meters per second in the eruption's initial stages. The volume is estimated to be around 10 million cubic meters, which puts it in the second place after the December 18th eruption. Like with the previous three intrusions, uplift continues, unhindered and at a steady pace. This suggests that this cycle we're in will continue and another intrusion will occur that will likely result in an eruption. As mentioned in my previous video, the date of this recent eruption had been predicted two or three weeks prior, and was based on the fact that intrusions seem to occur every 27 days. This means the next intrusion could occur during the first week of March, with the likeliest location still being between Mount Stora Skogafell and Mount Hagafell. Now, on to the interesting study. As most of you know, on November 10th, a truly massive event happened under the surface on the Reykjanes Peninsula. On that day, a dike intrusion occurred that formed a 15 km long magma dike in just six hours, causing ground to rip apart above it by more than two meters in some areas. Now, three months later, we have a better idea of what happened down there in the Schwarzenegger system. As I've mentioned a few times before, this all began on October 25th, 
when we began detecting uplift in the Schwarzenke system again. That wasn't much of a surprise, as we'd seen similar readings from the system since 2020, although this time it was slightly faster. This magma was accumulating at depths of 4 to 6 kilometers for two weeks, from October 25th to November 9th. Then, on November 10th, after enough pressure had been reached in the magma chamber, an intrusion occurred. Since the last eruptive period on the Reykjanes Peninsula some 800 years ago, a lot of pressure has built up on the plate boundaries, and when the intrusion occurred, this pressure was released. This is why the November 10th event was so large, with peak influx rates into the magma dike from the magma chamber being a staggering 7,800 cubic meters per second. Yeah, you heard that right. Over these six hours, the dike reached an estimated volume of 130 to 139 million cubic meters, which is just slightly less than what the 2021 eruption in Geldingadalir erupted in six months. This dike volume was reached despite the volume of the magma chamber being just around 80 million cubic meters. That is because as magma reaches higher in the crust, it gets less dense, with a calculated ratio being 1.6 to 1.8. This event was a gem when it comes to geoscience, but sucks that it had to cost so much for Grindavik. What's so interesting about it is how these volcanic periods behave, how the one hundreds of years of dormancy affect the eventual awakening with enormous amounts of pressure. It is definitely crazy to think such a large event happened just a few months ago. It's on a this is what happened 1000 years ago type scale. For comparison, the largest effusive eruption on the planet in the last 1000 years, Skaft our Eldar or Laki, had an average output somewhere around 7,800 cubic meters per second in the first two weeks. So, if the November 10th intrusion were to have reached the surface, we could have been looking at outputs possibly in the thousands of cubic meters per second, although for a really short time, as the amount of magma is nothing compared to the bigger systems like Grimsvötn or Bárðarbunga. So, we're beginning to see how this eruptive period will teach us a lot about geology, but at the same time, people on the Reykjanes Peninsula are having to live in a lot of uncertainty for who knows how long. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.